Hi, Danielle the Clay Lady here on the Clay Ladies campus in Nashville, Tennessee. This is the last of our series of six short videos on how to throw on the potter's wheel one step at a time. You think after shaping, that's all there is, but you really need to think about looking at your pot one more time and giving it a final look. We want to make sure of a few things. One, we want to make sure there's no water in the bottom. Sometimes in the process of shaping, we forget to wipe that water out of the bottom and we don't want the water soaking into the floor of our pot because when it dries, that might create a crack down there. The other thing that we want to do is make sure that our rim is nice and compressed and then it's rounded. We don't want a sharp rim because when clay dries, it shrinks. And so if it's thin, it'll even get sharper. And when we're looking at pots, one thing we love is just that round, the roundness of the pot. So we we want to make sure that that's nice and round. If in the process of throwing, sometimes one of the side of your pot will get a little bit higher than the other. And so this would be a good time to even that up. This wall is pretty even, but let me show you how to take off the rim. You want to make sure that your thumb and finger are wet. You want to be tucked in and braced. I'm going to put my finger on the inside, thumb on the outside, and then I'm going to use my needle tool. And I'm not just going to poke in, but I'm going to hold my needle tool right on my thumb and I'm going to slowly, little at a time, cut in until it hits my finger and then I can pull that off and that'll even up any unevenness that you have on your rim. It did make it kind of bumpy so I'm going to use my sponge, I'm going to use my finger and compress and maybe that changed the shape a little bit so I can do just a little bit more of the shaping. The other thing we need to do is we need to get this excess trimmed off. At the very minimum you use your wooden tool your rib and that little hole is for you to hold it wide with your fingers and you want to create a bevel because we're going to run our wire underneath this so at the very minimum we want to do that but you can also use this wooden tool I call it the knife tool make sure it's wet hold it like a pencil brace and I can see where my pot's starting to get buried in the clay right there so I can take my tool and just very carefully little at a time I'm creating a channel and I can go all the way down to the bat cut that out and then I can use my needle tool to cut underneath this and this is going to help save a lot of time in the trimming stage so we're going to pull this out this can be worked back up into your other clay re recondition it and then you make more pots out of all the clay you can use all your clay and now I have a really clean place for the wire to go under. Let's say that you're moving right along and you go, oh no, you hit your pot, oh no. So a lot of times the first thing a person wants to do is just grab this and try to make it shape again. But I wanna show you the power of the pressure point because although this is all misshapen, it's not a question of grabbing it and forcing it back into shape. I'm gonna use just the pressure point of these two fingers, just a little finger tip right there. I'm gonna start at the bottom and I'm gonna slowly move up. My arms are very braced. I'm not really shaping. I'm trying to just remind the pot where I want it to be. My hands have gotten a little dry. I'm gonna get some water and I'm gonna slowly go around those shapes again. I can go here with just pressure points and I can completely reshape that. So do know that the clay, although it seems fragile, it is durable and you don't necessarily, if you make it a bump or a bang, you don't have to call it a blunder and be done. You can remind the pot where you want it to be with just pressure points. When it's time to take this off the wheel, you do need to run a wire underneath it. And I like to get my wire nice and wet. There's a lot of different theories on how to run the wire underneath with the wheel going or with the wheel still. I just always do it with the wheel still because beginners usually have a hard time with the wheel going. So I want them to feel in control of the clay. So we put our thumbs on top of the wire, the wire's wet, and we run it underneath the pot. So I have thrown this on a bat, so I would be able just to take this pot and let it dry to leather hard on this bat until it's time for trimming. But there's also other ways that you can get your pot off. One is just by lifting it with your hands. This does take a little practice, but it can be done with a few tricks. The main thing is you want your hands nice and dry. You've run the wire underneath and you use this part of your hand down at the bottom where you know the floor is. You don't squeeze, it's more at the bottom and you lift this up and then you can move the pot to a small bat. Again, that's a little hard for beginners. So I like to have pot lifts. Pot lifts are a tool that you can buy at your clay supply store. You wanna make sure they're nice and wet. You wanna make sure they're clean and you can push them 
under to the pot by giving a little bit of pressure and you don't go all the way underneath the pot just under the edge just about this much under the edge and then you can tilt this towards you and you can put this on a smaller bat for storage when it's time to take the, the pot lifts away you push down and you slide out like this sometimes one pot lift will get stuck and then you just hold your pot and pull that pot lift out so there's a couple different ways of getting your pot off the wheel you want to let this become leather hard so then you can turn it upside down and do a little trimming there's going to be another series of videos on how to trim your pot with the clay lady so be sure and look for those and i hope that you've enjoyed this series of how to throw on the potter's wheel with the clay lady one step at a time if you want more information, just go to theclaylady.com, see everything that we're doing on the campus, all the products, everything that we have to support your creative endeavors, like my new book, The Clay Lady's Lesson Book. And I really appreciate the teaching opportunity. I so enjoy watching the joy you get from creating with clay. And remember, it's not just with clay, but do be an artist in everything you do.